Yes, no worries. Yeah, we did get to know each other very well. And I was like, you know what? I'm trying to get her to be a regular on my podcast. And I am actually putting her on the spot. So hopefully it helps. Fingers crossed. Is that a yes? Is that a no? Yeah, okay. I have there fun. Let's do it. We'll work See? it out. When I emailed her, she was like, well, I don't know. I'm busy. You know, I had a really good time with you. It sound, Honestly, guys, it sounded like we went on a date. I had a good time, but I don't know, you know, my schedule. <laughs> oh, that, oh, okay. So, nah, I better not go there. You <laughs> got to be careful with every little thing you say. It's like, I, I was going to make a joke, but see, it's like, everything is, racist or it's like um if you're a female and you're making a joke that's a little bit more about making a joke on the male female thing you're gonna get in trouble it's like every everything you say right now is like so delicate but i guess that didn't make sense because i'm kind of talking within myself i i what i was gonna say is is i'd love make to do joke. it but it's like it's a typical it's a typical female scenario when these things happen right it's like this story that story but that's gonna get me in trouble that comment's gonna get me in trouble i'll bet you oh no i, I know gonna... one of your hundred hundred thousand listeners are gonna come at me with that one. Oh no we're gonna keep this little banter we're gonna keep this part of the banter between you and i <laughs> <laughs> but i'm glad you're willing to yeah, I will say do it, right? But we know what we mean, and no one else is going to hear what we mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think they're too smart, and they're 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 like making up all these stories in their head already. So they're already there. They're like there oh, and yeah. beyond. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What? What? <laughs> how many people talk about chairs? <laughs> right. Um. Well, you know, it's really fun because I mean, th this is, this is my, okay. Because, you know, I have, I have more than one office. So when we try to do this in my home, I have dogs, I have internet issues and everything going on. So it's almost a given that I should not think of staying home and get out of the house and go to one of my locations. So, um, what's really funny is, is that the one that I'm in is like a square, and it's, it's an old 1930s building, and it's very cozy, and it's really just like one office suite. And whenever I, like if I, if I position the camera somewhere else or, or whatever, um, somebody makes a comment about something. And I just actually decide to just change all of the furnishings. I put a different desk in here from my other office and I get a lot of comments with that chair. Men love that chair. It's got some kind of like a, I think a, a more masculine vibe, but I mentioned last time it's a Tommy Hilfiger. So, you know, whatever. Very powerful. You know what it, it, it's, it's like when I look at it anyways, it can't speak for other, but when I look at it, it's like a throne. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, if I sit in that, I'm like king terrain right now. Well, you can't see on the other side, but I have a pink chair on the other side. So I got a little bit of the, you know, more traditional masculine. And then I got the really feminine and nobody really comes to this office, but sometimes I have pillows and I interchange them because I'm trying to get into my inner self and my inner self is foo-foo. I like girly colors, you know, I like like all the fur and the fluff and everything. So the couch that I have in my office suite has a compartment down below. And shh, most people absolutely don't know this, but I have white fluffy foo-foo pillows. And, and so when I know nobody's coming in, I take those foo-foo pillows out and I put them on the couch Sometimes I work like really early in the morning and I'll, I'll be here till like two in the morning and I'll move it from the desk and I'll go to the couch and I'll just kind of 
lay on the couch with my little foo-foo pillows and do whatever I have to do with my work. But um, you know, what's really interesting. Once I had a client who came to my office and uh, it was, it was for coaching and I had been working with him for about a year. And it was really interesting. The more he would come to my office, the more comfortable he would get and you get to know your people. So it's like, he starts taking off his shoes and, you know, he wants to take off his socks and he wants to lay out on the couch. Well, one day I forgot to put the pillows back in and there were like, you know, three of these fluffy white pillows on there. And I'm telling you, he had he, he fell in love with the pillows. He started like hugging the pillows and he was getting really overly comfortable on my couch and everything. So the next time he came in, I did it on purpose to see what he was going to do. I left the pillows out for him. And I mean, he was just, it was a little weird. He was loving it. And then the next time I put the pillows back and they weren't, you know, out of the compartment from the couch and he's like, where are those pillows? So it, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because sometimes men get into their little, you know, feminine side and they like all that warm and fuzzy stuff. I guess it's kind of like in line of, um, we sometimes think that women are lovers of taking baths, but when men, you know, take a bath, they really, really enjoy it. And, you know, they take you know, out their little, bubble bath and you know the the smelly scents and the salts and everything so to each his own oh, anyway yeah. i know you don't want to talk about this stuff fluffy pillows and bathtubs of course i do why not we're the best of friends <laughs> are we not i just realized what i said yeah. <laughs> all right we can continue on <laughs> i guess it's related right <laughs> yeah this is you and i this is you and i come on we have to those who who don't know, like we, how can I describe what we what you and I? We, it's, you know what it is. It's like you meet someone, and it's like you've known that person your whole life because you guys connect on such a wavelength that you got you can talk about anything for hours. I think that's what it is between you and I. Yeah, it it was like that when we did the pre, and definitely when we tried to take. The first episode oh yeah it, 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 you you guys should have all been there i mean we were we were dealing with so much stuff it was just unbelievable but it was kind of funny but you know good thing we weren't live <laughs> i still actually you know what i still have that so i still every once in a while I'll go back and i watch it i was like look at this energy man this energy is <laughs> i think if it always it always should be that way and everyone on this earth should be able to connect with people like that. It was just, like I said, you you would not have thought we only knew each other for like, what, a couple of weeks, a month? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of people don't realize like um, what a host of a podcast show gets involved with with the guests. I think a lot of people just assume and and sometimes it happens this way that you just kind of like make an arrangement to have a guest and then like two minutes before you're supposed to go on you set everything up and boom you start talking. But yeah we, we just kind of I don't know it's it's also you I'm gonna blame it also on you it's not on me it just went on and on and on and on. And then we were taping and I think I went over what you usually a lot for the taping, but we had we had all these issues with the taping, so we knew it wasn't going to be good for the audience. So, you know, here we are here we again. Are. We haven't gotten to it because we just start banter. Yeah, but I think that's how it is. That's I mean, that's not how it is. I think that's how it should be. That's what I always want. I always want the genuine connection because the last thing I want is to say, okay, um. Here's 10 questions, go to ask the 10 questions and off you go. Yeah. Right? I want it to be like, it's two friends having dinner. We're talking about world events. We're talking about our day. I want that kind of energy and that kind of feel. And I think for sure you and I have that and then some. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> no, we do. But you know what? You're absolutely correct because um, I was doing a podcast I think it was like last week and 
sometimes it's really hard. Like my personality, if it's like you can give me one sentence and I can talk it for an hour. And I'd like to think it's not just frivolous fluff, but I can talk it for an hour. And if, if somebody is not so extroverted or they don't have a lot to say, I have the ability to carry it. It's just a natural thing. But I mean, I, I was doing the podcast last week and it was like tooth and nails. I felt like I was doing so much work and there was an awkwardness between me and the other host and they didn't do the research and I didn't want to reprimand them or say anything against what they said about me, but it starts really changing the rapport when we're doing our interview. And then you have to have a decision whether or not to just basically become the entire show. I don't mind that because some people just let you go off and pick a topic and, you know, teach, give tips, whatever it is. But it's just, you know, I start wondering sometimes when I, I, I'll say, and I don't mean to be snobby, but I'll give somebody a chance and they may not be so seasoned as another person, but I like their mission and I want to be part of it and hopefully in my own little way help them through it. And they just don't participate in their own journey. And it makes me think that they supposedly have a passion to do a podcast professionally, but they just don't know where to go with it. And, you know, I work it out because I want it to be the best for them. But it can't always be me that's making it the best because when I leave they remember the person that's hosting and you know hopefully they do remember me but they remember the person that's hosting and if they don't remember their host then what is the podcast so oh, yeah i make them remember me i'm telling you i mean i want them to remember me like i remember that sofa that chair right there <laughs> that's the connection i want I gotta figure out okay <laughs> you can i'm come still to waiting California. you can come to los angeles you is can that, go is that a, in the truck and, and you can take it away how's that <laughs> is that, a, is, that a, is that a personal invite sure yeah and we'll do a podcast session and you can sit on the chair oh i already know how i'm gonna pose <laughs> as i'm as i'm having that conversation <laughs> i want a latte you know, I want one of those those pillows that everyone else but me gets to see. And um, yeah, <laughs> you laugh, but hey. <laughs> well, I, I'm almost tempted, but I, I got to take the couch apart to pull out one of those fluffy pillows. <laughs> oh, no. Well, we have but each other's totally contact information. It doesn't match the chair. It totally doesn't match. So it's like I have to hide them. Is it like, um, is it like a cream or is it more like a white off-white color? No, it's white, white. White, white? Okay. So when I come to California, I'll make sure that I wear a white shirt, white pants, white shoes. And you're going to blend just really well with that. You're going to be, you go. you're going to be all white, snowy white That's with right. a darker face. So there you go. You're, you're going to, you're going to be like a, a little seal on the snow. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have one, a pillow in one hand and a latte in the other. I'm going to be living life. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, you know, it's quieter now all over the United States. So the truth of the matter is, even though it's different, we should actually be living life now. Because if we're not doing it now, when are we going to do it? It's, it's so much quieter. It's like we have, I don't care what business somebody is in or what they're doing. We have a little bit more time on our hands. So we just oh, really yeah. need to enjoy it. So we have so much time now, so much time, um, because the things that maybe we took for granted because they've been removed now has enabled us to focus on other things, right? Which is, which is a blessing in itself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I live in Los Angeles and I'm not saying it's not common in other parts of the United States, but especially in areas like say a Los Angeles and New York, maybe Nashville or, you know, 
a, a, a state that really has a very strong and dominant cosmopolitan environment, you lose touch of reality. And a lot of people are like more me, 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 and the life is so fast. And um, in an odd way, I think this is really what we needed. And you know, your, your audience doesn't know, but we touched on so many different things before, but it was just almost like, um, I think in so many ways, what's happening now is giving people that never had, or people who didn't see an opportunity or have any kind of financial rewards in their life really has an opportunity to give themselves a jump start and just really live the truth and just, you know, if it's not now, it's what I said. It's like, if it's not now, then when is it going to be? And I think it's just so much easier in so many ways. And we, we've we all learned to be, um, on one hand, humble, maybe the majority of people within themselves, but I think more compassionate because um, I, I know we talked about this, but it doesn't matter where someone's living, you know, what race, nationality, creed, what their economic level is or whatever. To a strong degree, it doesn't make any difference because we are in this together, as the cliche says. And I think the meaning behind that is more meaningful than we really understand. And people have a lot of compassion because most people are displaced right now and they they actually see now you're getting me in the zone but they actually have a lot of that's my job my job is to get you into the zone <laughs> yeah we because we don't we don't have like the strong expectations with another person. We're not judging them as much as we would normally judge them because we're just so aware that every single person has gone through so many changes, but it doesn't have to be a negative change. Like, you know, somebody could be almost homeless and, and they may not have much money. Um, you know, they, they lost their job or whatever, but in a really strange way, if we can keep our anxiety at a lower pace, if this is the case, because it's more negative, we can look at it like, no, but actually it should be positive because this is giving you an opportunity to start new and, and maybe do something that you've always wanted to do. And, you know, it's like, if you have fire under you, you're going to jump a little bit faster and you're going to make whatever you're trying to do happen. If you don't have that urgency, then, you know, we kind of, creep along like turtles or we may not do what we wanted to do in life and we we look at things a little bit differently so i i think that you know this is a time that everybody has a real strong opportunity and even the people who are still working for their job i mean they they're like if they're working from home their their bosses don't really know what they're actually doing all day long, most of the week. And so you can kind of sneak in a little side hustle that you always wanted to do. And indirectly, a lot of people probably don't realize, but they've actually learned a lot of skills that they probably perfected by now. And they didn't realize that they have, they're entrepreneurs. They're basically- That's what everyone should do. And everyone oh. should be doing that, right? Like everyone, <laughs> This is the year, well, not 2021, but 2020 is the year that everyone should identify, hey, the world, for lack of a better phrase, has come to a standstill, and we're all in this together. Many of us have lost our job. Many of us have been displaced, as you mentioned. Many of us are cut off from our family. Many of us are in a very different and or difficult situation. And if you don't take the time to realize your passion, if you don't take the time to understand what you're passionate about, and if you didn't take that and start to grow it in 2021, most of us won't ever do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think it is what I was saying earlier. It's because our environment on the outside is slower still. It's, it's slower. 
And so when it's slower, if you're not familiar with something, you still have time to catch up and perfect it. But it's just the mindset of the people. You know, there, there's a lot of people that will assist you or help you and they want to see you succeed. And it's um, very understanding if you tell someone you're starting a new business or you're newer at something, it's not so judgmental. And so people will let you succeed because they want to see this happen for you. I mean, I'm, I'm in my 50s and I, I've never seen this with anyone. I don't think I have a conversation in a day from anybody regardless of what business they're in or social conversation, one of my clients on a personal level that, that doesn't bring up the change. And there's some confusion with every single person because we just are not clear how to navigate it. And you need two people to navigate something and have it work effectively, but still a lot of things are like a puzzle. But the willingness to succeed is there. And so I, I think that, you know, really, it, it, you know, if I can go out and save the world, that's really what I would put a lot of emphasis and time into is just do it now. Jump into the deep end. You're going to swim. Yeah. You and you and I, are, it's like, absolutely. You and I are about to do that today because that's what we want, right? We want to make sure that, because you mentioned that you're 50 years old and I'm, few years younger i guess <laughs> but you know I that's what we <laughs> but that's what we want right we want to get people to view it the way that you and i view it and we want to take them on that journey and that's a perfect segue because what i'll do now is i'll officially start and welcome everyone to another episode of behind the shades with my really really good friend with my how am I going to introduce her? Because I try to, I want to do better than before. This is my good friend. This is someone who I've connected well with. We have good energy. We have good banter. We have good back and forth. This is someone who, one, she still owes me her sofa. And two, I want one of those pillows. And this is Jessica. And Jessica, why don't you let everyone know who you are and tell us a little bit about yourself before we dive in and let them know exactly what we're going to talk about. Okay. Well, this is this is the first podcast or, you know, public scenario where we've actually talked halfway through without the introduction. <laughs> but I love it. Um, okay, love so it. I'm, Jessica, I'm Jessica Russell. And uh, yes, I'm in my 50s. I'm, I'm a little crazy, you can see. Um, my, my background is actually, even for myself, very interesting because it creates a lot of conversation among people that meet me. And I have been on uh, many, many performance type of arenas, you know, on stage with conferences, expos, presentations, panels, uh, pod, podcasts um, is something that, you know, I'm newly venturing in because of the fact that I'm in LA and in, in all of California, you can't have public events. And so uh, we're still kind of in that. And even the event industry around the United States is still a little slow right now, if it even exists in you know various states that are out there. So the dichotomy has changed a lot. But I actually grew up with, uh, won't get too much into it, but a single mother who raised two daughters and my mother became an entrepreneur and she was not wealthy, but she became successful a few times because she fell into that success, decline, success, decline. And I grew up understanding her ways. I, I studied her business and so forth. And so, um, she at that time was a businesswoman, but truthfully, generation wise, that's not what most women were. And so um, I always remember going to restaurants where my mother would have a business meeting and I would have to sit like a really nice girl either next to her or the booth behind her while she had her meeting. And it was always men. 
and and she was actually in the real estate business uh different forms of real estate and so that's really what my dominant background is and so I learned from, in my heart, one of the best. And for a good portion of my adult life and to the end of her life, we were very close and in business together. So what happened was, is I actually have never really worked for anyone in my adult life. I've always formulated my own companies, my own businesses. I've had many, I was able to do this because of real estate. I live in Los Angeles and the prices are high. I got in at a time when there was really no youth in the Los Angeles market. And I, I say this, you know, all the time, some people understand, some people don't get it because it's just so normal now. But I started at a time where you had exceptionally dominant people in the industry in the Beverly Hills area. And they've owned companies. They were very mature in age. And unless you were, you know, a gay guy or a younger gay guy's boyfriend, there were really no young females. And so between the gay guy's boyfriends and Jessica, it was like this amount of people in the entire environment. And I'm very old school. I love fashion and I knew how to play the part and people actually embraced me. But the homeowners didn't always embrace me because I was too young and I was dealing with big money. Um, there were a couple niche markets that actually really embraced me. And one was where we have, you know, you hear a lot about around the United States called the Hollywood Hills. Obviously people know Beverly Hills, but we had, because we had a lot of celebrity at the time and it was very youthful environment, I found my niche in those areas and I made a lot of money. With that money, I was able to get involved with other businesses and companies. And when I was really young, I was naive. So when I would start getting involved with businesses, I, I actually didn't know what I was doing, but I just, you know, kind of followed my naiveness wherever I would go. And of course, because the same as my mother, most women did not have money. And so I worked mostly with men. And when you work with men, and when you are, you know, in your 20s, in your 30s, and you look like you're barely out of your teens, you have to navigate things in certain ways, and you have to learn certain skills, and you have to learn skills to keep business on track and, you know, basically work with the players. And so I was able to do that. But Real estate gave me really great rewards and I'm, I'm still involved with different facets of real estate and investing and, and so forth. But um, because of that, I actually owned and I was very involved with the entertainment industry. So I had two companies in the entertainment industry. Um, after about eight years, I sold my management company to one of the majors and um, I got out. Uh, you know, in Los Angeles, so many people have their main career, but then they kind of have side hustles. And so I would kind of take the venture wherever it seemed right. And I always am interested in a lot of things. And so, um, I've, I've, I've got involved with, you know, predominantly most of my life with consulting. I worked with corporations, with employees. Um, I, I, I'm very, I, I have a lot of secrets, we'll just say, because what always seems to happen is when I work with a man specifically, uh, it's, it's in a business capacity, I'm consulting with them about their business, their career, or their company. I tend to learn about them on a personal level, about their family, it starts getting really into like a psychological session, you know, therapy. And so. So let me ask you then, when you say that, is that what you're kind of doing with me? <laughs> when you go with the back and forth? No, is that we're, like... doing, we're doing the banter. We're doing the banter. That's something else. No, I mean, I, I could tell you secrets and I've actually have worked directly with a lot of well-known people and one of them 
and if you Google it, you can find it, is the president of the, the, uh, the former president of the United States. And well, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna look that up because when you mentioned you have um, secrets, you know me, like we've known each other, we've, you know, we've got to know each other quite a bit. I would like to know like those experiences because I know initially um, you, you've had a number of successful ventures, mm -hmm. right? In, in, in your past and you mentioned secrets, like these experiences, these secrets, these ventures, how has it shaped you? as a person, Jessica, like, how is it, how is it, how has it made you the woman that you are today where you have such a incredible positive view on life and you've come from a situation where there wasn't many people representing you from a woman's yeah. perspective, maybe that looks like you, like, how has your experiences, your secrets, your ventures shaped you to become the woman that you are today? Okay, so it, it sounds all good, but it's been very painful. It really is difficult. You know, it's, it's, it's really, really difficult. And um, though, as you age, because obviously a lot of stuff happened in my 20s, my 30s, some in my 40s, but not predominantly in my 20s and my 30s, it was very painful because it hasn't always been easy. And whereas you're thinking business and you need to make a living and you want to do business just like a man. Sometimes somebody wants to take you out for like, a, let's say like back then a $20 dinner, which was a lot of money. And they think you should be happy about that. And you're thinking you're gonna do a big business deal with them. And so, you know, it's been very hurtful um, a lot of people have taken advantage and I've given them great rewards and knowledge and they will turn around and walk away from it. Um, there's been uh, a lot of circumstances where I've learned so much though. I, I've had lawyers in my life, all of my life. I've had to sue people. I've had to collect money. I've had to also and, and I think this is, this is something that I will say, honestly, if anybody has a chance to do real business with me, I'm very protective over good people and good relationships because I do do business with people who really don't know what they're doing, but I give them an A for effort. And I have to be very careful with them because I don't want to be the dominant force, but I know usually what I'm doing and I'm protective of them because I don't want them to have to experience what I did. And I usually end up doing things for them in a deal. And um, if I've been there and done that, I somehow offer shortcuts so they don't have to waste their time in learning things that are really not important, but can create pain or create for them to fall backwards in what their ambition and the career is. So, you know, it, 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 it's, it's been like that where, you know, I've lost businesses, I've lost a lot of money, I've had to deal with lawyers, people that I've trusted so highly, or I've adored so highly on a professional level, I've had to sue, and I've won every single lawsuit. And I can tell you, I have very sizable judgments that you can see on paper that I can hang up on a wall and it would just blow your mind because you can win a case by judgment, but it doesn't necessarily mean you can collect. And when you're dealing in Los Angeles with lawyers, it's very expensive. And, you know, it takes a lot of your money away. And then you realize sometimes that People can handle who you are and your success. Truthfully, a lot of men could not. So that's also been a social battle of mine. Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a chameleon. So when I do business, I'm a different animal than, so to speak. Now you're going to get me on this, I know, than I am in my home. Yeah, <laughs> see, I, I, I was coming, but... Um, you know, I'm very old fashioned and I'm very old school, but I, I do 
when I see people that are not as advanced or they're green in whatever I'm doing, I try to respect the relationship and see where it's going to go and try to help it along so it runs effectively without insulting or, um, you know, especially men emasculating them and, and try to do the deal on behalf of all of us because I, I'm, you know, at a level where I've, I've learned a lot of that and contracts, you know, meanings, paperwork, what needs to be done and so forth. But it, it hasn't been easy. But then I've also received a lot of rewards because people have really respected my tenacity. And when I did get older, regardless of what happened when I was younger, I of course gained all the knowledge and I have a very strong history behind me but I'm a woman. And so it's very hard, especially because I'm an entrepreneur and I'm not in that corporate existence to find other women that have a similar or same background. So it's almost a lone wolf out there. Is it and because, then, is it because more so your personality? Because it's definitely not your experience, right? Like you're an experienced person. You've been doing this, as you mentioned, your twenties, your thirties and forties, and here you are in the very young age of 50s, right? And you're still, I know she, she's laughing, everyone. She's smirking because <laughs> she knows where I'm going with this. But is it more so because of that? Because let's say, let's say I came to you and I was like, you know what, Jessica, I want to do a business venture. I want something done, marketing, for example, right? You mentioned you're very protective of the people that come to you and so far, you and I have a very good relationship, mm -hmm. right? So when you look at it, is it your experience that is maybe putting you in a situation where um, you're not able to find or relate to other people, other women, sorry, in your industry? Or is it more so that, you know what, you're so, your personality is a type where I've had to do it on my own for so long and I'm been successful enough at it, I'm just going to continue down that path. I don't think the later is what I am fully. And I'll explain because I even recognize this in my mother. My mother became success, uh, successful because of necessity. And she just kept going and going and going because of her children. She wanted to you know, have something to offer to her kids. And because she worked so hard, she became what she tried to be. Does that make sense? It's like, it was hard for her, even though she was a wonderful mother, to just be mom. Because her natural mentality and language was business business, business, business. And I have a sister and my sister is a nine to fiver. And, you know, she's displaced right now because of what has happened, but she's not an entrepreneur. And so she's more comfortable working for somebody. So she didn't have this same as I did with my mother. And so when I get involved with something, I don't want to say in the truest sense, but I can get a little OCD because when I'm really interested in something, I get very involved. And sometimes I forget that I have the knowledge that I have compared to another person. And I still have a very strong drive where the ambition takes me but I've learned an age to not have people fall behind me while I'm dragging them along to be with me. I try very hard to have people alongside me and do things together. And so, you know, I'm somebody who didn't have to be the way that I am out of necessity. I think that something clicked in me that I just became. And, and, you know, I've also spent many years truthfully where, you know, I have a joke, but it's kind of not funny. Everything in me happened 
in my personal life later. But when I was running my businesses and my companies, and, and it always involved a lot of people working for me or working with me, I was working around the clock. I mean, I was sleeping with my paperwork and everybody else was coming into the offices at regular business hours and they would go home at regular business hours. And sometimes the rewards don't seem like they're in front of you because while I was holding everything up to try to move forward, they were leaving me behind and they were bypassing me to success because I was, so to speak, stuck in my own bubble, you know, my own businesses. And, you know, part of that is my fault and I'm proud of it because I've given them things. Like, I'll give you an example. In most of the businesses and companies that I've had, I've always had interns. So some interns get paid, some don't. The ones who get paid obviously don't get paid that much. So um, this was true, especially in the entertainment industry. So instead of having people make Xerox copies for me and bringing me tea or whatever, I would make sure that sometimes they would sit in at a meeting that I would have and you know teach them things, teach them shortcuts. I would actually intentionally have a I called them a network meeting once a week where we would just talk and they would ask me questions about their job and I would just go into the spiel that never ended and it was a training session for them because it's the same premise and I actually wrote a book and I, I wrote the book it's, it's going on like you know maybe I, I don't even know like 20, 20 odd years ago called Hollywood 911 and it was a very very candid book. It was a how-to book for specifically actors and um, actors, so-called producers. And at that time, unless someone was established, they didn't have like the guerrilla filmmaking and the so-called um, independent film industry that we have today. But it was very, very open. And I would give them the shortcuts because with what I said earlier, I don't want people to have to go through some of the things that I went through. Um, there's very, very good men out there, but sometimes in certain industries, they're terrible by majority. And I did not want them to have to go through what I went through. So it's not an anger, it's not a bitterness, but it's something where um, I think to a strong degree, I got involved with a lot too early in generation and in lifetime. And so like, you know, in, in the social life, I, I've had kids older and, you know, strong relationships older. I've, I've kind of always been out of sync for my age, you know, for my time. Um, the viewers may not see, and, and, and this is not an insecurity, but I'm bringing it up for a purpose. I'm heavier now than I've ever been in my life. And I've actually been going through over the last two years, a couple of minor health issues and it will get better, but I'm used to being, you know, an average weight and I'm not a bad looking woman. And I'm in my 50s. I look really, really young. And I've always had that Sally Field situation going on. But I noticed, and I'm in, I'm in beauty land, right? I'm in Hollywood. So um, it brings attention and it could open up a door, but you have to be able to keep your feet in it. And so I don't take that for granted, but it also works in the reverse because people judge you and there's a lot of misconceptions on how you look. And so I'm not saying I'm the most gorgeous person, but a lot of things that a woman who's an entrepreneur does, especially with men that do have success and money, is going to deal with some challenges because of the fact that she's female. And when you're living in this life and you have to live like a man, you have to pay for rent, you have to buy food, you have to provide, you know, hopefully for your kids, um, which, you know, women do definitely probably more so when they're separated or divorced, you know, they're single moms. Um, 
it's very, very difficult. And that leads to something also because I've been involved with extremely wealthy people in the real estate and investment business. And when my mother and I did business, it's interesting because sometimes I would find business and I would bring it into our relationship. And my mom also looked young for her age, but we speak the same language, but I would bring it into the relationship. When my mom passed away, the sad part of it is I lost a lot of those contacts because I learned they weren't interested in doing business with me, but it was more because of my mom. And so that stuff throws you into a loop. So it's been a combination of everything. Now I can take all of that and I can be angry and bitter and having to sue my business partners and, you know, people stealing money or um, whatever, you know, but when you're younger, it clings on to you like, you know, water in a sponge. When you get older, you have to learn how to let go. And that will bring us into another situation is I'm very, very credentialed and very educated in health. And also in, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a CHT, which is the, the highest formal trained hypnotherapist in the United States. Um, I, I have a couple of offices for that business and also, you know, we're involved with mindset and corporate training and consulting using NLP and hypnosis and, and coaching and so forth. And so at this time, especially when my mom was very ill and I knew we were going to lose her, the industry of real estate was crashing. I lost a lot of money, investments, houses, and so forth. And shortly after, I was going to have my first baby. And I realized then it's like everything is just happening way too fast. And I needed to kind of step out of the circle. And I needed to understand what I'm doing to myself here. And I, I need to just stop. Because when you get caught up in this cycle, that's just like a hamster going fast on the wheel. Sometimes you don't know how to jump off or you cannot. And you made a good point, Jessica, in regards to um, like when you're going through all of that, right? If that's like, if you take a step back, like let's take a step back from that and say that that's a lot to be going through, right? Like you have this strong bond with your mother. You have this relationship with your mother. You have this business acumen that you're getting from your mother and with you, you're developing it and you're going through your experiences. And you mentioned a good point when it comes to building relationships. How do you, at that point, continue to build a relationship when one, you realize that some people are in business with you because of your mother now your mother is not in the picture anymore. Mm -hmm. And two, you still have to prove yourself because you're perceived as different because you're a woman amongst men predominantly. Yeah. Right. And three, um, you mentioned that you look younger than you are, which she does everyone, by the way. And as she's putting up her hair and she's posing as I'm saying this, <laughs> trying to distract me. And that probably has to play a part where people may look at you differently just because you're like, eh, she kind of looks like she's inexperienced. Because it seems like we attach um, looking younger with inexperience when we necessarily shouldn't. Yeah. Right? It's, it's looking younger with inexperience and naiveness and also my voice. And when I get in a zone, people can see I'm intelligent. And then they really respect me. So it's not really so much about not having respect, especially when people have seen me in that zone. But um, at that time, I, I actually had my entertainment companies and there were a couple of companies that were watching me. I had a, a management company called Sinkler Films. And my mom had a long illness with lung cancer that eventually spread to the brain and she just was not passing on and we knew she was going to pass on. And so it was horrific for her, but 
I actually, I, I had about like 500 clients and I invited all of my clients, I don't know, like three or four different nights. I split them up. I invited them all over for dinner. And some of them really haven't even made a dent in the industry. And I'm like, I want you guys to know what's going on. You can bail if you want. But I was going through this self-realization. And at that time, I had a company that was looking, you know, into purchasing me out. And I said, this is what's happening with my mom. And I need to step back a little bit. I had, I had, you know, junior agents and agents. I have people working for me. But I said, if this happens, this is what I'm thinking of doing. And I'll be honest with you. I kind of understood that a lot of people are going to bail. But if they were, I don't need them. Um, it really didn't matter to me also if I sold the business or I just shut down because sometimes it's better to even let all your hard work diminish so the past doesn't haunt you and you can be free. Um, but I ended up, I ended up kind of making a deal and I, I did, you know, get out and I took some extra time and I spent it with my mom. And every doctor's appointment she had, I went to and all of that. And I started learning more about the brain. And I saw the horrific cir circumstance that she went through. But I also saw how when she was sick, a lot of people were pulling away from her. Because when people are sick, unfortunately, others get scared. Or unfortunately, when the woman who makes a lot of people money and they respect and admire is dying, they use that as an excuse to get out and distance themselves. And so I kind of watched this going on and it was really negative and it's very unfortunate. And some of these people were in my life for like 20, 30 years. My, my mom divorced when I was young and there were actually a couple of men that were involved with business with my mother for like 20 years, 30 years. There's one man very, very specifically who was so close with her. I mean, he had such the utmost respect. He was almost like my surrogate father. And this is a man who says, if anything ever happens to you, even though we were adults, right? You will always be okay. I will be here for you. You're like family. I'm telling you that broke my heart because as she passed, he also passed intentionally out of my life. And so, you know, that made me really hurt. So I was wounded, but I had to go through soul searching.